Okay, so we've done a basic fetch request. We've asked the server to send us some data. We've got that data. We've put it on into our comments or onto a web page. Now I want to get a little bit more technical. Look at some of the the more finesse details of making a fetch request. So I'm going to be using the same URL as before. I'm going to be requesting some JSON data, a list of 10 different users and some data, just sample data to be sent back to me. This is the URI that I'm going to use to get that data. And I'm going to use the fetch command as before. And I'm going to send a request to this URL. And I'm going to get a response. I'm going to take that response, make sure that I got something back, convert it into the JSON, and then use that JSON and write something out to the console or write something out to the web page. Now, the difference between the basic request, where I was just putting the URI in here, and this version that we're going to do, is that we're going to use the headers object and the request object. The request object, here's a couple of samples up here, we can enter just the URI, and that kind of makes it the basic version that we had before. I can just do that. There we go. And this is going to work the same as the basic one where we just put the URI here. Create a request object. This is the location of whatever resource we're trying to get. Call the fetch. And that'll work. And then we get the response code back. The other thing that we can put inside here is there's an options object. So the second parameter for a request is some sort of object. There's a bunch of properties that we can use. Now these are the most common ones. There's a few others that don't get used very often, but this, these are the most common ones here. So method. What method do you want to use to go and fetch that data? And here's a list of the different methods. So get, usually you're just requesting some data to come back from the server. The thing about get requests is they are automatically cached, so you will get the same data again and again unless you change something in the URL. If you change the query string or some other part of this, you'll get new data. Post, you're requesting some data be sent to you, but you're also providing some information. So data is being sent to the server, and typically you're using this to do an update of something that's on the server. Put, you're giving some new information to the server. So you're doing an insert of information to the server, and you will get some data sent back to you. Delete, you're setting up some parameters because you want something deleted on the server. You will get some sort of a response back. And then options is a method where you just want to have the headers themselves. You're not going to get data. There's no body, no file being sent to you, just the headers so you know that the thing worked. Or you can test a connection using options. So that's the method. Headers. There's a variety of headers. Whenever you make an HTTP request, so you're sending a request to the server, you're getting a response back. When you send the request, there are headers. So if I look at this web page here, here's my web page. This is, uh, I'm running it, and you can see there was the HTML page was requested, then the JavaScript file was requested, and then this is the actual request to that URI that I specified earlier. And here's the status, my HTTP status code. 200 means everything's great. I sent you the file, the one that you asked for. Uh, type tells you what type it is. So these are in the network options for the developer tools in Chrome. If you right click and you go to inspect, it'll bring up the tools. And then usually it starts on elements. This is the HTML on the page, console, I can write out things if I do console.log, it'll appear here. If there's JavaScript errors, it'll appear here. But network is really useful for us. So I'm going to just look at the request JavaScript. This is the JavaScript file. When this file was requested, I've got headers is one of the tabs. Preview, that's the file. Response, same thing, that's the file. Headers, in general. Here's the request URL. This is the resource that I was asking for. Get is the method that I was using. 200 was my status code that came back. This is the location where the file was found. So I requested it. It came back from this location. Um, don't worry about the refer policy for now. 
And then you can see there's request and response headers. These request headers right here, these are the headers that we're defining here. Now, some of them are defined that we're not allowed to touch them. And built-in security for the browser, you're not allowed to spoof things, you're not allowed to change a whole bunch of them. But there are a handful of ones that we can change. If we look in the request here, you can see here's a list of them. User agent, this doesn't really get used very much. This is one that you used to not be able to change, now you can change it in the JavaScript, but there's not a lot of value in changing it. Refer, this is the HTML file that was asking for the, um, the page. This is something you cannot change. Uh, host, you can't change that. So it makes sense, the things that you're not allowed to change. Except, this one's one that we can change. Except means, what files are you willing to get back from the server? So I'm making a request for this JavaScript file, and I'm saying, I'm willing to accept any kind of file that you send me back for this. The response headers, okay, content length, content type, so the type of the file that came back was in application slash JavaScript file. So it's a text file, there's the size in bytes of that file, here's the date and time where that file was created on the server, or last updated, or right here, the last updated. Okay, um, so let's look at the request headers inside of our code, because that's what we're going to be using here my request um, is going to be using headers. So inside this options object for the request, I can set up method, and I'm going to say for this one, I'm going to use get, and then headers. That's going to be my variable here, h, will be my headers object. I don't have anything in there yet, but we're going to put something in there in a moment. And then we've got body and mode. Well, body is if I was uploading a file, if I was sending some data, if I was doing a post, a put, a delete, then I'm going to be sending something to the server, then I would have a body. We'll look at that in a future video. Mode has to do with cores, which is something else that we're going to be looking at in a future video. But uh, basically cross-origin resource sharing. It's a policy for determining whether or not you are allowed to get a resource back from one domain if you are on a different domain. So if I'm on the website uh, ibm.com and I make a request for uh, some JSON data or JavaScript data uh, that is coming from microsoft.com, there will be a policy on the server that says whether or not you are allowed to use that. I can make the request, I can get the file back, but then based on the course policy, it'll tell me whether or not I'm allowed to actually view that data, use that data within my script. So this is the default. I'm just putting it in there as an example. So there's my request object right here. So it's defined. I've got a URI and then here's some options being set. And inside my headers, I'm going to just add the one append. This URI right here, what I'm expecting to get back is some JSON data. So inside of here, I'm going to define it. I'm going to say, here's a header. That I'm going to say accept application slash JSON. That is the type of file that I'm willing to accept. The server may have some other file type, and I'm going to say, okay, no, this is the only one that I'm willing to accept from you. Um, so append will add headers to the headers object when it's being sent. If you're updating a, uh, a header that already exists, there's also a method called set that you can use to update something that already exists. So these are the ones that we're allowed to use. Except is the file type. Except language, you can specify, hey, I'm only willing to accept files that are written in German or French or English. Content type and content length. These two I can use, I can set, but they really only have to do with post, put, delete, if or post and put really. If I am uploading a file to the server, then what is the type of file that I'm uploading? What's the size of the file that I'm uploading? We can specify those headers if I'm uploading something. So if there's a body, if I don't have a body to find here, there's no point in setting these headers. Um, 
if something starts with X and then a hyphen, this is usually something custom. There's a lot of JavaScript frameworks that use X requested with, and then they'll say XML HTTP request. So it's an AJAX request. And they throw it in there just so when the server receives it, they'll know, okay, it wasn't this is an AJAX request as opposed to somebody typing something into the location bar in their browser. Now, there has been a recent change saying that these custom fields are no longer standard. Uh, they're being deprecated, but for the time being, you can use them. And user agent used to be um, not allowed, but recently they've said, okay, we'll allow it. So you can define your own custom user agents for your scripts. All right, so we've defined our headers. We just put the one header in there. That's going to be set to the headers property inside the options for our request. Method is get, mode is course. All of this is bundled up, passed to the fetch. The response comes back. We can then say response.ok. This is going to be a true or false value telling us whether or not the response came back and was a valid response. Um, usually it means that the HTTP status code was a value between 200 and 299. But if the file is cached and has a status code of, say, 304, saying there's no difference in the data that you received, you've already got a cached copy, that'll come through as uh, OK as well. So we can check that. We can use this inside of an if statement to say, hey, you know what? Was the response OK? Yes. All right, I'm going to do something with it then. I will return response, and I'm going to use the JSON method to convert my response into an actual, I'm expecting JSON, I'm going to turn it into the string to be passed down to here, or JSON object rather, to be down here. If this fails, what I want to do is I want to call the catch. So I'm going to throw an error, like that. Throwing an error inside of a then method, which is for handling promises, will automatically make it jump down to the catch. And then this error object is, this err variable is the error object. And there's a property called message, which is what's defined in here. So bad HTTP stuff. That's what we're going to say is happening. And down here, I will just console log out JSON data. So the whole thing like that. All right, let's take a look at our web page. Here we go. And reload. Users. There we are. And request headers, except there's the one we defined right over here, application slash JSON. So we got the valid one here. If I close this off and take a look, we can see 304 not modified. So the data that came back was the exact same as before. And this is what I was saying about the get method get methods automatically get cached. Post, you'll always get a fresh version of it. So we requested this by get status code 304, which still got past the OK response, even though if you look in the MDM resource, it says only for statuses between 200 and 299. But 304 is considered to be a reasonable response as well. Um, application JSON. So let's see what came back content type inside of here. Um, where was it? Except... Oh, I don't see it here. I did see it on a previous attempt where I was doing this. Where I got back, it said that it was um, application slash JSON. We look inside the response headers for this one, application slash JavaScript was the content type. And here, uh, the content type is missing. But because we said we were only willing to accept application JSON files, that's the one that came back because it said it's fine. It didn't give us a message about being the wrong uh, MIME type or anything. So let's take a look at our console. And this is the console log JSON data. There we go. So this is a JSON object that has all of this information inside of here. Uh, there's 10 users who are defined. That's what these 10 objects are. And that's the data that came back. 
One last change here we'll make. Let's try it out with post. Go back to network. We refresh this. There we go. Status 201. 201 created. So 201 means it's okay. 201 created means there was some. It's confirmation that there was something created on the server. That's what this um, JSON placeholder is trying to do. It's trying to simulate the fact that something was created. You're saying post, oh, okay, you want to uh, do something on the server? This is the data that came back instead of everything about the user. You remember when we did the get, we got users 1 through 10. So they're saying, oh, okay, yeah, we've created user number 11 for you. So that's that's what's happening here. Headers, request, there we go, application JSON data. And if we were to add a body, then that data would be defined down here as well. We'd be, we'd be able to look at the data and see what's being sent. But that's a video for another time. Okay, hopefully that uh, makes a lot of sense to you. Hopefully you're able to follow what we're doing with request and headers along with the fetch and how this is all piecing together. I will leave a code just uh, in the comments. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below.